Good morning, my name is Adrian Monk, Managing Board of the World Economic Forum. Just to explain to non-Khmer speakers in the room, there will be simultaneous translation and uh, English translation will be on Channel 1. As you'll see, I'm going to put my headphones on, so I'd advise anyone who's not a fluent Khmer speaker to do the same. And uh, we'll be taking uh, a statement from the Prime Minister about his aims, uh, and then we'll be taking some questions through the chair. Um, but I want to start by formally welcoming Sundek Prime Minister Hun Sen of Cambodia to this press briefing and uh, by asking the Prime Minister what Cambodia is hoping to achieve as host of this World Economic Forum on ASEAN 2017. Prime Minister. First of all, I will not respond to this question. It's uh, habitually. I uh, just uh, opened the way first. And then uh, uh, receive the question later. Uh, excellencies and ladies and gentlemen, at the outset, I would like to convey my warm welcome to the media from Cambodia, ASEAN, and around the world, as well as all the participants who are here today at this press conference. Along with my profound thanks for your participation in the World Economic Forum on ASEAN to cover the spectacles and news of this event for wider distributions to the public. Cambodia is greatly honored to be the host of World Economic Forum on ASEAN under the theme Youth, Technologies and Growth, securing ASEAN's digital this year. <coughs> Truly, this forum, which is taking place along with the 50th year's anniversaries of ASEAN, provides a platform for discussion and experience sharing on emerging trends related to three main topics the newly changing global context, ASEAN economic connectivities, and ASEAN's use dividend, all of which are crucial for ASEAN vision and development. I'm pleased to note that this event has brought together policy makers, CEOs of multinational companies, business people, and youth from inside and outside of the region, reflecting a great importance attached to ASEAN on the one hand and that given to Cambodia, on the other hand. Undoubtedly, for the last 50 years, ASEAN has become a strong and vibrant economic, political, and social cultural communities with maturities, solidarities, development, peace and stabilities, particularly with resilience to overcome major crises. In fact, these joint achievements have been creating favorable environment 
for successful implementation of ASEAN Communities Vision 2025. At the same time, we have to acknowledge that now, with the fast-changing environment, ASEAN also have to overcome a number of challenges, including the rising of anti-globalization and protectionism and nationalistic and populist policies, as well as the rising temperatures in conflict in some regions and uncertainties of global economic growth, etc. On the other hand, the strong momentum of the fourth industrial revolution, based on fast progress of information and digital technologies, is playing a determinant role for the expansion of industry, education, trade, and technologies that will gradually long-term impact on every aspect of society. Thus, ASEAN, as the centers of global growth, with young population who are exposed to and fast absorbing these technologies, has to think about appropriate policies framework to support these structural changes being driven by this revolution over the longer run. In this regard, ASEAN must come up with its own integration agenda, adapting to all these changing trends in order to seize the opportunities and address challenges and all the consequences of the fourth industrial revolution, especially in enhancing the quality of education, skill training, addressing unemployment, and developing effective social protection system and addressing inequalities in society, etc. Based on this, I expect that this forum will produce fruitful and positive discussion to showcase the potentials of ASEAN and Cambodia as well as to provide perspectives and ideas for setting futures vision of ASEAN and enhancing business networking and cooperation in the region. Particularly in cooperating the new concept related to new and innovative ways of job creation with high productivity and inclusive developments to grabbing all the opportunities arising from digital and demographic dividend. In the closing ceremony today, tomorrow we will sum up the specific outcomes of the discussion throughout this forum. In this briefing, there must be a part in relation to the question you have just raised. And now, I think uh, you can pose a question to me and can open for the journalists, for the media to pose the question to me because there's still time for that. Thank you. Prime Minister, thank you very much. Can I get a sense in the room of uh, just how many people would like to ask a question? Just uh, raise a hand and I can judge how many people we have to fit in. So we have two folks on the front row. There is something, Prime Minister, I just wanted to follow up on your remarks. Um, you mentioned the Fourth Industrial Revolution and the importance of education. Could you tell us 
a little bit about how young Cambodians are being prepared for that revolution. What are the measures that your government is taking to ensure that young Cambodians get the kind of education that will be needed to uh, put them at the, at the forefront of these technological changes that are taking place? Thank you for the question, uh, which is not a question for Cambodia and uh, Cambodian Jews. But this issue become a topic of consideration of the world. The fourth industrial revolution truly will bring the benefits for the people in other countries. But one should not forget that technologies which is more advanced and more advanced will also create the risk for jobs. In which before let's say the work that requires 10 people to work but with a robot to do that job, replacing uh, humankind. That is the problem in which we could find a way to solve it in the future. Jobs have not been created enough for the people, but technologies we can say that robot working replace mankind. Therefore, the loss of job. How to solve the loss of job for the people? For the Cambodian Jews to be prepared, I uh, observe them from the ashes in which Cambodia has been undergoing and the loss of intelligence to date, Cambodian youth are now thirsty and hungry for knowledge and the policies to promote the training of human resource, which is the top priorities of Cambodia, along with the policies of industrialization, along with the promotion of vocational training. I think Cambodian youth could keep its themselves a breath with the Jews of other Asian countries. I can uh, ascertain here with uh, all of you to be informed that about the strategies and the goal that I have set and what I would like to have. We are not able to reduce the property wealth, the income, <coughs> from one as in country to another in the framework of the first integration and the second phase and now come to the third phase. The Cambodian revenues cannot be compared with the revenues of the people in Singapore <laughs> or with the uh, other high GDP income of capital of the country. In Cambodia, we cannot uh, to make the people have uh, the same income, even in the rich countries like America, or France, or Europe. They could not make people have the same properties. But what I hope for is that, is to reduce the gap 
of uh, intelligent gaps, the think tank gaps, the Jews in ASEAN, they know what knowledge. We tried to study to have the same knowledge. That is the way that, that can be achieved through, the, through more investment on human resource development of Cambodia. Therefore, the think tank gap could be reduced in the framework of ASEAN as well as in the world. And it has the integration character in which we can work together effectively and with solidarity. That is a special point that I would like to, to share with you. Cambodian youth are thirsty and hungry for knowledge. Even yesterday, the forum, which has not uh, uh, organized uh, by voting forum in other country, in which the Cambodian Jews almost close to 3,000 participate in that forum, uh, correspondent with the organizer. That is the opportunity that Cambodian Jews uh, has capacities and, and, and if there is a big uh, mini room, I think more Cambodian Jews will participate. Thank you. Thank you very much. I uh, saw two hands up of the first row. Can I just ask uh, both of you to put your questions and also to uh, give your names and the organizations you're from. Thank you. It's based on the youth in this context of 50 years of ASEAN and in the fourth revolution, industrial revolution, how and what should we do to help the youth to work in the industry sectors and to contribute to the develop the economic development? Thank you. Can you just give your name and where you're from? I missed that. Some, some joy. from Asia. Thank you very much. And lady next. I am uh, second here from Cambodia Daily Newspaper. I would like to uh, ask some that how Cambodia is prepared to participate in one belt of one road, uh, what some that will uh, address in China uh, shortly uh, about this project, one belt, one. Uh, I am from Cambodia Daily. Thanks, so Prime Minister. I think following up on your um, words about Cambodia's youth. What, um, what exactly uh, are your priorities in uh, driving some of those uh, initiatives in education for young Cambodians uh, to prepare them for the Fourth Industrial Revolution, if I'm uh, right in translating the question uh, that way? And also One Belt, One Road, there's uh, a very uh, big gathering of, uh, of leaders taking place under the uh, presidency of China. Uh, shortly, and how do you uh, see Cambodia's participation in that initiative? Thank you for the question from the two Miss and uh, the question from the other side. We know that if we talk uh, that the Miss who are the Cambodian even though you, you have been working for Free Asia, which is a, a radio against the government, and you arrive for Cambodia Daily, which is also the opposing newspaper me all the time. But your Christian, uh, please me, on what do uh, you think of the common interests of our nation? I'm very pleased uh, to respond that Cambodia 
has uh, come to this stage. We have to know our past. Cambodia before, which was famous because of the killing and fighting, toppling each other's destruction. Life, million lives have been destroyed. We has been emerging, including grandparents, your parents can survive and provide you training. Now you can work for American radio, to American newspaper. Is it not a life uh, example of, of the achievement that the royal government has been doing for you? This is a concrete uh, example. If the Pol Pot regime has not been toppled, whether your grandparents, your parents can survive? For sure, no. And if the royal government, if your uncle's government that uh, holding powers for close to 40 years, the role of prime ministers, which is more than 32 years, then you can ask whether you can become a person who has been recruited by Free Asia Radio or by Cambodia Daily to work for them? Isn't it, isn't it an example that Cambodian people receive from what the royal government has been doing? This is an example to show you that the field of education, training in Cambodia has been the priorities at the time we start, in which we were left with only a small number of intelligences, even the, now the young generation. May you have uh, your uh, younger than uh, my children. You have uh, benefit that can become the journalist, not just to pose a question to me, to get oneself prepared, to get ourselves prepared. We do not target to, to prepare ourselves for the higher level. What we have been trying is to do in a way that children, all children, receive education through the state schools up to the level of university. Cambodia allow private university in which today more than a hundred uh, private university in which Cambodian Jews have many choice in choosing the, the knowledge uh, to study and to serve the market. The royal government which have the labor ministries as the assistant has been preparing vocational training and also target the vocational training according to the market demand. Cambodia has a process of industrialization 2015-2025 in which this become a main topic in order to respond to the technologies that will flow into Cambodia. If we do not have human resource, then they are, 
the investor will not be able to put the factory or invest on high tech in Cambodia. But I can say then, Cambodia. I receive already receive a numbers of factories already that I employ high tech. And we have to think about the uh, location geography too. The investor cannot move the factory from Thailand. From Malaysia to Cambodia totally. And sometimes the investor that used to invest in Vietnam cannot move their factories to Cambodia totally. But those investors. <coughs> They can set up additional factories, but not the build more factory in Thailand, but they come to build in Cambodia. Those investors, they will not build more factory in Vietnam, but they will come to build in Cambodia. Therefore, you can say, uh, one plus but we are not, not a dustbin for obsolete technologies. But that is a way for production. Let's say, for example, the Japanese company, they invest in Malaysia, they invest in Thailand. They need additional investment. But they come to do it in Cambodia. So, create the cooperation, the investors from Japan, and this cooperation between Cambodia, Thailand, and Malaysia. In so doing, I think, we are going to it is also the opportunity that promote better relation in the production in ASEAN. That will become the community 2025. Thank you. There remain another question and in relation to the one by one road forum. Uh, I really appreciate this uh, initiative of China. And also appreciate the concrete action taken by China. And please don't accuse me or leak me that I have a tendency toward China. But you should uh, take note of the realities. Let's say we have raised one concrete uh, issue. During the time of the world aggregate financial crisis in the year 2008, then, Chinese Indian economy remains robust. If Chinese economy collapses at the same time with America and Europe, then the world faces difficulties. China not only solve their own problem, but has been helping the region, the region of ASEAN, helping other regions, including helping Europe in order to save economy in Europe. And 
It is a part of locomotive of economic growth of the world. It is not just in the region. In particular, ASEAN benefit a lot from relation as a strategic partnership between ASEAN and China. ASEAN benefit because ASEAN export to China bigger than imported from China to ASEAN. ASEAN have the population of more than 600 million. At the time, have the population more than uh, 1.3 billion. So it's for sure the benefit of uh, both sides. But those who benefit more is a small country in ASEAN. In the relation of strategic partnership between ASEAN and China. For one boat, one bell, one road, after sea road and maritime sea road of the 21st century, I am amazed so much and appreciate the wisdom, the cleverness of President Xi Jinping of China that uh, not in a period of long time put forward the policies that enable the countries of the world have more choice. Let's say like in Asia, we have achieved already the establishment of ASEAN Infrastructures Investment Bank, AIIB. In addition to that, Along with India, Brazil, Brazil Russia, 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 and South Africa and China, setting up brick bank. It is not uh, the challenge against the World Bank. Yeah. It's not a challenge between brick and uh, World Bank. And in Asia, it is another challenge between uh, ADB and AIIIB. But it's complementary. Increase the bigger fund to provide for the need of other countries as well as for the region. Many initiatives, but no money. Actually, the shortage. If we take the map and show the initiative of Asia and ASEAN, we, we can fill up the room. But the initiative, all these initiatives had no money to carry it out. But for China, one, they put initiative, they put the money along with it. That is the whole of country. Let's say, for example, the Sea Road Fund, they put 40 billion US dollars so that other country can benefit from it. I will uh, taking part in the one bell, one road a forum on the 13, 14, 15. And after the speech, I will also have a, an official visit in China. Then, agreement. More than uh, 10 agreements, close to 20 agreements will be signed. After a number of agree has been signed in Phnom Penh. And that uh, the Tunis who work for Free Asia and Cambodia daily, they write it properly because it is a live broadcast. 
ไม่มีเรดิโอสไม่มีทีวี so if you write it wrongly make a wrong commentaries then uh, it would be seen that uh, you niece and nephew that are working for foreign to for foreigners it's truly really the servant of foreigners i don't want to hear such a word those who arrive for cambodia daily name rat They've been writing for Cambodia, cursing me for almost 20 years. At a time, getting ill has been abandoned by Cambodia daily. Yesterday, I sent a 20,000 US dollar to save him. So you have to understand the heart of Cambodian, our Cambodian. So don't be a to extreme like foreigners is better it's just to remind you but not you not acting against me if you are the opposing me millions of people are watching a live broadcast so we can have such an understanding and try to learn more study more Thank you, Prime Minister. I think uh, one of the uh, key findings from uh, the Forum's Global Competitiveness Report is that uh, a healthy, critical media is an important uh, part of any growing economy. So I look forward to uh, a good audience for this press briefing. Uh, thank you very much and have a successful summit. Thank you, sir. Thank you.